Hey everybody, this is Noah with Learn Meta Analysis, and in this video I want to explain all of the elements of a Prisma flowchart. So I have a different video walking you through how to create a Prisma flowchart quickly, that link to that video is down in the description. But I, I didn't discuss how to interpret one and what the different boxes mean in that video. So in this quick video we're going to go through what each of these boxes means and what should be listed there. So we're going to start in the top left here, the records identified from. Now, typically speaking, this is going to include databases. Um, so we would, what I would typically do is list the overall number that I found in databases total, and then the number from each individual database that was searched. Now, I also tend to search uh, the reference lists of previous reviews in the area. And so what I would do then is create a separate line down here with studies from other reviews. So um, I'll put something like, from reference lists, and then n equals, I don't know, I'm just going to put an x because I didn't think about this before I started recording. So I'd have from, from there, and I'd list the individual studies just like I'm listing the individual uh, databases here. But I'm going to delete that for now just for simplicity because I already have the numbers plugged in. So this tells us where we found all of the records that we first identified. Next, we typically would screen all of our records for duplicates, and we would remove all of those duplicates. So in this case, in this example, I have 200 that are being removed because they're duplicates. This means that I'm left with 800 records screened. This means that I am going to look at the titles and abstracts of all 800 unique records that I located through that database searching. Through that process, I'm going to be doing exclusion, right? I'm going to be looking at the titles and abstracts, and I'm going to be excluding studies based on what does not look like it meets my exclusion criteria. For the purposes of this, we're going to pretend like 700 of those 800 did not meet my inclusion criteria. So that is going to be listed over here on the right side. This means that we had 100 reports that we tried to get full text copies of. So it says reports sought for retrieval. That is how many are now left for full text examination. Well, we have 100, but first we need to try and actually get all those full text studies. That is not always possible, which is why this box on the right exists of reports not retrieved. Here you can see we had three. So in this case, the number of reports that we're actually going to assess to see if they're eligible for our full text screening is 97. So we're going to take those 97 full text papers and we are going to review them at length to make sure they meet all of the inclusion criteria. If they do not, we are going to keep track and keep records of why each study did not meet our inclusion criteria. So for the purposes of this, I created two sample uh, reasons. One of them would be not enough data for effect size extraction. We're going to pretend like we had 10 studies that were excluded for that reason. And we're going to, the second reason is that there was no control group. So that would be a reason why we might have excluded seven studies. So in the end, we would have 80 studies included in this review. So I hope this has been helpful for you guys. This is just a super quick overview of what each box within this very, very simple Prisma flowchart looks like and what it means. So there are other versions of the Prisma flowchart, but I think this is the one that is most common. At least I work in the field of education, educational technologies, a little bit of computer science, and this is the variant that we see most often in the field. So that said, I hope this has been helpful for you guys. Please like and subscribe to help support the channel and for more content like this. Thanks and have a great day.